down the hammer and pick up the pencil. You're about to listen to the Savvy Radio Show. Learn from real life real estate investors. Experience revealed with the Savvy Landlord. Hey, you tuned into the Savvy Radio Show? Yes, you did. SavvyInvestors.com doing it each and every day. Because I got love for you. And, and, and I got a new microphone checker. One, two, checker. I'm still trying to figure it out. So I just wrote down some random notes to talk to you about. I had a hip pause there. All right. So all the things that I'm learning first quarter and uh, continue on. This, these are just notes that I randomly wrote down. Number six. You know, people ask me. It's called about being a millionaire, being fit. And I, I'm really having this issue in my mind for a long time, you know, why am I so lucky? How did I become a millionaire? And what does it take? It it just seems like everywhere I go, people want to become millionaires, right? And it's like this thing of this mysterious uh, situation, like they they can't become that, you know, because I'm a millionaire, I'm, you know, I'm smarter than them, or I'm a special person. And, And the reality is, Ladies and gentlemen and gents, it's not. It's just hard work in the right direction with the right effort, with the right tools and the right influences and the right knowledge is how you really want to become a millionaire. So, you know, I kind of ballooned up. I don't know if you've known me, I'm new to the game, uh, who I am. I, I don't know if I mentioned it. I'm Stephen Van Kallenberg. I've written a few books I'm called The Savvy Landlord. I'm in Oklahoma City. And I've had a, you know, not an easy road of life, but I was wondering, you know, it took, it took a while uh, to become a millionaire. It it wasn't easy. It was a lot of ignorance. And I always ask this question to myself all the time. I'm like, you know, I could be a millionaire, but I'm, I'm fat and it's gotta be, it's easier to be a millionaire (laughs) than it is to lose weight. Like that's been some of my questions in my mind. Like, uh, I've been trying to run a marathon, and it just seems like this marathon, this running, has been so intense. It's it's a mental game. You got shoes, and I did a whole podcast on it. I don't even know what the number is, but it's down there. Just go to the search bar, type in, you know, running or marathon or millionaire. You'll you'll find it. But the thing is, it's like I was, I was like, man, it seems to be easier to be a millionaire than it is to run a marathon. And then I just started, I started thinking about it just recently. This is what I've been thinking about. This is what I've learned. It's like, I figured out that I overcame being fat. (laughs) I overcame that food can control me. How did I, I was so broken for 30 years about money in debt, 30 something years. How did I overcome debt? It was just a behavior. It was just a lifetime. I had to reprogram, rethink things through. And I realized that I, I, I adapt the same exact principle to my health and it's working. All of a sudden I got BBE, best body ever, hashtag BBE, like in training regimen and the same effort. Like, and so let me just give you some tips. That's all I thought about. It was about being, I was being wealthy. I, all I thought about from 1999, probably till 2018 maybe 2007. That's all I thought about. That's all I read about. That's the books that I read, the people that I talked to, the groups I was involved in. Yes, I had a day job with the OK Bride and stuff, but I was fixated on real estate. I was a dog in heat, dog on a bone. And then now when I feel anything unusual or when I, when I'm like, okay, I'm all caught up for the moment or I'm at home and I'm by myself and I'm like, okay, let me unwind. You know, people turn on the radio, pop a beer or whatever. I'm like, what could I learn? And what's the first thing that comes to my mind? Reading. I mean, running, how to be a better marathonist, how, what foods to eat, what, what, what's a complex carb. I'm, I'm learning about carbs, right? So in about, I, I figured in another year or so when I have this physique that I've been trying to get since I've been forever, it's the effort that you put in. It's the time. It's the commitment. It's the daily activity that you do every day. You got to you got to stay focused. And you know, I said this not too long ago, but you know, it's also your ladder that you're climbing. Make sure it's on the right building, right? So that the the workout regimen or the the money saving or whatever. If you want to be a millionaire, you got to buy assets. Are you buying the right assets at the right time? that are going to contribute to your success. Okay. 
So being a millionaire, being fit, that's that's what I'm learning about. Are you working on a daily? It's a daily, are you committed? Are you grinding it out? And are you grinding it out in the right way? Are you Googling up the right context? If you're coming across something and you're hitting a roadblock, ask somebody a question. Read a book. Be thirsty for what you really want. Number seven, there's alternatives. I was talking to this dude. I'd known this guy for a long time. I mean, I'm talking about before I was even had real estate, basically. And I, I've seen this guy grow. I've seen him fail. I've seen him succeed. I've, I've seen him rededicate his life to Christ. I'm hanging out with this dude. And he, he wants to be fit. He wants to be healthy. And I'm like, there's alternatives, man. There's alternatives. When you get a sweet tooth, why don't you take a vitamin gummy? Ooh, he said, I, that's a great idea. I like gummies. That's an alternative. If you got a sweet tooth and you're struggling and you want something sweet, maybe chew some gum or drink water. You're trying to lose weight. You 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 know you want to be a millionaire. You got to find whatever works for you. It may not work the way I'm doing it. My my train of of going down this one road may not be at the level that you want to be. Maybe it's 100 sit-ups every day. It may not work for you. But find another alternative. If you're hungry and you know you shouldn't be eating at nine o'clock at night because you just ate a big meal, maybe you should. When you have find an alternative, water, drink water, do something else. Find another alternative. Number eight. I learned this other day. This is crazy. This thing called someone said this to me called common knowledge. Anyway, I was I retained an attorney the other day on a project that I'm working on, and maybe I'll tell you that project sometime I, I, I don't I'm still in the middle of this project and I went down and met with this attorney and uh, someone said this to me when I you know after the meeting at lunch they said yeah the best advice you could do is retain the biggest attorneys in that area and I was like why because it's a conflict of interest they can't they can't sue you if you've already retained them once before and I was like seriously that's savvy for real like and I was like man I was like dumbfounded I was like that's a you know that's dumbfounded so I actually called two people I, I go homie I go have you ever yes I've heard of that I've actually this guy said to me I've done it before in a small town and another guy another friend of mine I'm like hey man have you heard about hiring more than one attorney like in a certain area yes he's like that's common knowledge Ooh, <laughs> that's my number eight common knowledge Man, common knowledge may be for society, but common knowledge may not be for me. I'm not on TV. I, I don't read, watch TV. I only read certain specific books that help me propel what I'm trying to accomplish. And that's another thing. People ask me all the time, like, what podcast I listen to. I, I really don't. I'm not amazing. I don't really listen to podcasts. I don't even know how you have time to listen to podcasts. I like education. I like learning. I want to know more. I mean, I think podcasts are important. Obviously, I'm doing them. Um, I haven't found a podcast that I really, you know, I could sit through the whole thing and listen to it and it's viable or it's a bunch of jibby jab about how cool they are. I, I just, that's, that's the podcast that I've been affected by and that's kind of turned me off. So, but the, the point is you may not know something. How do you find out something you seek and you ask? And I think ultimately you need to think about stuff. I think that's the new deal for the 2020, 22, 22, 2025 for the future, next generation, we need to sit down and take some time and think about what you're, what are you doing? You know, last, the last episode I said, you know, you know, ask the hard questions, like really think about it. Like just, just, just marinate. Uh, this has really affected me lately. Like the things that I'm involved in now that I've had some pain in, if, if I really thought about what would it look like five years, three years, 10 years, one year, what, what would it look like? Is that where I want to be? And I, and I go back through some old photos the other day of like projects I did. I did this <laughs> RC car project and I'm like the, the couple thousand dollars I invested in it and the time and the energy and, and what did it yield me? If I really thought about like, how am I going to get the mechanics going? How am I going to, how am I going to get the track to the location and how am I going to sell it? And I think, you know, I think we, everyone needs to go back and reread the four hour work week. The one good thing about Tim Th Timothy Ferris's book, I haven't read that in years, but it's a phenomenal book. People don't bring it up as often as enough. The one thing that I got out of that book a lot was you need to test your idea. Does it really work? 
Can you, can you get someone to give you the money? Ooh, come on. Someone needed to hear that. I'm going to give you a little story. My mom, my mom's entrepreneur. She's, she's my mom. I, I love my mom. I would not be where I'm at today. If you got a mom out there, you need to text your mom. Just say, I love you. I love you, mom. You special. You gave birth to me. But I love my mom so much. I think I have some entrepreneur blood from my mom. My mom would be coming back. She's always worked a job, worked three jobs, always came back. Steve, I got this idea. I got these bumper stickers. I want to do these bumper stickers. And I'm like, I'm, she's like, I'm going to be rich. <laughs> I'm like, you going to be rich selling some bumper stickers. Okay. You know, I'm like, go ahead, mom. Go. And she'll be telling me these bumper stickers for a long time. We'll be dealing with these bumper stickers. And I was like, mom, listen, all right, here's the deal. I will print these bumper stickers. I will be your first investor on these bumper stickers. Boom, boom. But before we get rolling, I want you to take this piece of paper out and go sell people and get 10 pre-sale orders of your bumper sticker. The hottest one you think that everybody wants to buy a bumper sticker. Because everybody, every time she tells somebody this bumper sticker, they're all they're all about it. Like, oh, that's so funny. Da, 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 da. That's a great bumper sticker. I would buy one. Okay, show me the money. And I think that's what we need to do. I, I know this is what I'm learning. Is that I should have took the time to think about it. Would someone really buy it? And you know what's so funny with my mom? She never sold the bumper sticker. No one was willing to give her money, and thus we never printed bumper stickers. Imagine my old behavior, I would be having a thousand bumper stickers trying to unload them. And that's what you need to do. You need to think about your idea, test your idea, actually get someone to see value in what you're doing and to write you a check. Get the money first and then produce the product. Get the vision so hot, so white center, so amazing that people are willing to open their wallets out. It was interesting. My daughter's just selling some Girl Scout cookies and people are already willing to give money before the cookie. Now, that's not how you're supposed to do it. You're not supposed to take pre-orders. Well, obviously, it's my first time, <laughs> my wife's first time doing it. Girl Scout cookies. We violated the Girl Scout cookie law, the Bible, whatever. And, you know, but the interesting thing, I thought people are willing to give money before they receive the product. You need to have that same tenacity in whatever dream, whatever thing you're trying to do. Get the money beforehand. Sit down, write it down, and do it. Number nine, don't do, hold on, hold on, hold on, Let me, uh, my notes, I got my, I'm struggling on my notes here. Yeah, this is from my entrepreneur, my entrepreneur friend. <laughs> I scribble scrabble this one down real fast. I, these notes, I just wrote them down real quick lick, and it says, don't do, teach what you do. That's Listen, anytime you're doing something at all, you should be teaching the next person to do this so you don't do it again so you could scale your business. Like seriously, like you may do something one or a few more times, but you need to do it in, on everything and you need to cross train your staff on how to do it. For example, the other day I was down, uh, I need to, on my apartment building, I need to put a new uh, asphalt down and I took a rookie with me. And I took my staff member down there, my whole team, and I just showed them exactly how to hire a contractor. I showed exactly how to talk to them, how to get the in writing, a lot of Now they can handle it on their own. And my new rookie dude, he can handle it on his own, kind of. He's insecure about it, but he could. But he saw how it goes down. You just meet the dude down there. You talk to him what you want, and then you get it in writing. Do it once. I mean everything. I'm talking about... I, I guess this is from being a dad, but like I got to teach, I, you know, you got to teach my son to shave. I teach him, you got to teach everything you do to the, down to the smallest point so you could scale. Okay. Kids, laundry, dishes, about money. And you could be creative. Like I just randomly was creative with my son on taking inventory and teaching him basic counting principles. You, this, everything you do, Someone you should be teaching, some, be an apprentice to somebody else, whatever it may be. You teach to be rich. Teach so you can grow. You never know. Number 10, think, who's next behind you? When you get up and leave that office, who's coming behind you? What legacy that you're leaving, but what systems and documentation do you have in place? 
So somebody doesn't have to clean up after you. Think who's behind you. Clean off the table. Pick up your trash. I know this is so elementary. You're like, what the? Exactly. What the? But I'm just thinking, like, I think that we forget that we're in our own bubble. But I'm I'm constantly thinking, like, where where am I taking this company? And who is coming behind me? And, and you know, when I was talking to my partner, she has a daughter. I'm like, we're, we, we're going to think 20 years ahead from now. The industry that we're in today, what will it look like 20 years from now? Just like electric vehicles, right? Will there be more electric vehicles? Will there be more solar? Now, I'm not saying that you should think this way so you can get into this industry to capitalize on it. And that may be your, that may be your cup of tea. But if you're selling cassettes today, you're going to probably be out of business any day now. Okay. Think about who's coming behind you. What is it going to look like? What legacy you're going to leave behind? And then uh, number 11 on this one is don't be blindsided. A lot of, I, I just, I talked to a lot of young people and they just, they're confused and they're blindsided. They, they didn't know that there's going to be a, a, a charge for services rendered, let's say on their checkbook. Don't be blindsided. Be aware. And you don't have to exhaust the opportunity to it's irritating, but at least ask a few questions or un- take an understanding of what's really going on, but don't let it drive you, your fear, but don't be blindsided at the same time. Don't, you, you know, don't walk into a meeting that you're not dressed for. Don't be blindsided. Don't, you know, bring a pad and a paper. Maybe make some calls before you walk into the meeting. Who's going to be in the meeting and what are they like? Maybe look on their Facebook page. Don't be blindsided. Don't be on, I didn't know. Those words drive real entrepreneurs crazy. Google, you got Google everywhere. Google it up. Check it out. Anyway, hopefully this juiced you up. Let's recap real fast. Number six. You can be a millionaire. You can be in shape. You can be whatever you want to be and do whatever you want to do. It just takes daily, minute by minute, time, commitment. Make sure you got the right plan. Now, your plan may not be the perfect plan or the person that you're working with with the plan, but you got to have it and you got to stick to it and you got to do it no matter what. And if you can, if you can, if you, if you're really good at, at a sport and you done very well with that sport, you can apply those same principles to money. I always wondered like how I was always poor. I was always broke. I was always behind. I, you know, I got divorced. I was $30,000 in debt. I mean, my whole world crumbled. And I just thought that I could never, ever do it. And then I became a millionaire and I used, I, I had it retrain. I, I retrained my mind. I was like, I can't spend this. I can't buy things if I don't have, I had to reach, I had to discipline myself. And then now when I see a hundred thousand dollars in a bank account, I don't buy, oh man, what car I can go buy. Now, when I was younger, I, Ooh, what could I do with that? Nope. I'm like that hundred thousand in my mind today is like, can I make a million out of that? How many units can I buy with that? Who can I invest that with? Who can I loan that to so I can get a return? See, my thinking is different. If you want to be a millionaire or a track star or have a six pack, you apply the proper principles and it's the daily commitment over a certain amount of time. And you could set some gauges. You could say six months. You could set a goal like, hey, I need to have this unit and then you could scale it up, but you could do it. You just need to apply it. Number seven, there's alternatives. Not every way is the right way. You, you can't control your sweet tooth. Try vitamins, gummy vitamins. Try drinking water, try gum. There's an alternative. Eight, common knowledge. It's common knowledge for somebody else. Don't assume. Find out more details. Number nine, whatever you don't do it once on your own, do it with someone else. Train them up with you. Do a project together. Teach while you're doing it. Do it on a video. You do it one time. This business I'm in right now is phenomenal. Every time we sit down and we're, we're working on a new, we record it, we video it, we scale it. Don't just do it teach it 10 think who's behind you what's next if i leave this desk what will it look like if someone coming behind me you got me feel me and then 
11. Don't be blindsided. Don't be blindsided. If this, any of this helps you out, great. You can reach me at Savvy Investors or Savvy Podcast. I'd appreciate your comments. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know if I can help you in any way. Appreciate you. Broke? Just tired of making chump change? Learn how to improve your income and build wealth with real estate investing. Investor Weekend is here to help you do just that. Join us for a powerful, knowledge-packed weekend that is bound to enlarge your real estate investments. What can you expect to get from the Investor Weekend? Hear great national and local real estate investors. Learn how to buy rental property, build wealth, and connect with other like-minded people for funding, partnerships, and even hot deals. Whether you are a seasoned investor or never purchased a property before, you don't want to miss the Investor Weekend. Right now, only $98. Go to www.investorweekend.com now to register or to find out more. Thanks for listening to the Savvy Radio Show. Glide online and listen to our other motivating episodes at SavvyRadioShow.com. Connect on Twitter at LandlordBook and always be buying assets. 